Hello and welcome to another video from the Marketing Study Guide. In this video, I'm going to have a look at the limitations of the BCG matrix. My name is Jeff and I'm a long-term marketing lecturer and practitioner. Okay, as you know, the BCG matrix looks something like this, where you plot various portfolios and you have uh, quadrants known as stars, question marks, cash cows and dogs. Um, and you'll find this this particular model or matrix in a lot of um, textbooks still, even though it was developed a long time ago. And as a result, because it's relatively old, it has quite a few limitations. So let's work through them. Okay, now firstly, the matrix itself was developed in the late 1960s. Um, in that era, economies were primarily manufacturing based. So this matrix was developed thinking about large scale manufacturers. Um, and it was also developed for conglomerate businesses. So it was designed for an individual business to use and plot individual portfolios that they owned in order to help them allocate investments. So it was an investment allocation tool rather than a strategy-based tool at the time, um, although in textbooks it's often presented as a, a strategy tool. Um, however, today we go forward, you know, 50, 60 years since this uh, matrix was developed and the economies are more service based. Um, we compete less on price and cost, which is a fundamental underpinning of the concept of this model and more on capabilities. Um, and I said that price and cost is less important than before. And of course, companies build strong brands and, uh, and perform successfully in the marketplace, regardless of their cost structure. So let's have a look through the limitations. The first one is, we've got two dimensions here. One is relative uh, uh, market share, which goes across this way, and market growth rate. So the one going up and down I'm talking about first. And the model uses that as a proxy or a surrogate for overall market attractiveness. So an attractive market is made up of a whole bunch of factors, and I've listed uh, quite a few of them there. And some of these are positives and negatives. So market size, profit margin, tick, tick, they're good. Something like uh, competitive rivalry and threat of, threat of disruption, they're not good. Okay, but you can see where I'm heading with these factors. There's a whole bunch of assessment factors that we use to work out whether or not a market is attractive. However, this model just uses one. Is the market growing? And... While that's a broad guess, and obviously a growing market indicates consumers are moving in, competitors are moving in, uh, there's a change in lifestyle, so there's some logic to it, but it's simply too limited in terms of the scale and the scope of assessing an attractive market. The second thing is the relative market share. It's the same concept here. Um, they're using relative market share in this model to reflect uh, competitive strength. And the argument is the stronger we are in market share, the more dominant we are uh, in the marketplace, the more powerful we are. As simple as that. And again, like the previous one, competitive position is not just built around market share. Um, obviously, you know, we're doing well at the moment and, and that's good. Um, however, there's a lot of other factors that come into play, which if we don't consider, makes this model um, not overly helpful. So the whole bunch of factors, I've, again, I have listed there that would give us uh, strength outside of our market share. So do we, you know, how strong is our brand, our customer following, um, our innovation skills, etc. cetera. Um, have we developed proprietary stuff? Um, and I've got the example there of software, but there could be, you know, whatever industry we're in. Okay, so that's the second limitation. The third limitation is the way this model was constructed, it uses relative market share and you map yourself against the uh, next largest competitor, which means that in any industry, there is only ever going to be one star or a one cash cow. Okay, so stars are up here, cash cows are down here. Um, and I've just put five firms in the same industry, and this is how they would actually represent on the, the uh, matrix you'd have one dominant player who is the market leader and their relative market share is more than one. 
so superior to their, their next largest competitor. But all the other competitors compare themselves to the market leader. So they're always going to be less than one. So they're always going to be dogs or potentially uh, question marks. Um, now, in today's world, because of the strengths that these companies can have, this no longer makes sense. So if I make a simple uh, analogy here, a simple example, uh, in the smartphone market, if I was to look at smartphone uh, unit shares, um, and typically I would see uh, Samsung as the unit uh, market share leader. So they, they have a cash cow business. But Apple, who uh, is not the market leader in terms of unit sales, um, is a dog business. Now, we, as we know, uh, Apple is one of the most successful companies in the world. So it, it clearly doesn't make sense when we simplify the market down and uh, use it in this manner. Uh, limitation four is it's the, the model is built around the uh, part of the product life cycle, which we also address in marketing. And stars and question marks, because we're looking at growth rate, these operate in growth markets, perhaps late introduction. And down here, um, cash cows operate in maturity or decline. And what the, the BCG matrix suggests that in a growing market, it is possible to catch up market share because new customers are coming in. There's less brand loyalty. There's less, um, let's call it respect of the market leader. And new competitors, new customers come in and go, I'll, I'll try that one. In a mature market, we have established patterns. So it's just simply not possible to move a, a dog up to a cash cow. It is possible to move a question mark to a star. So with this basis of, of the, the matrix, it assumes that, that cash cows are virtually protected, that they are ongoing, um, pockets of, of money that will keep continuing on. And generally that will last for a while, but you know, there is um, some examples here, Toys R Us, Blockbuster, Kodak, that were once market leaders, clearly once were cash cows. Um, however, they're no longer either around in case of these two or far less substantial than they were. So if you map it and you go, oh gee, what a guy, we've got a cash cow, we are set for a long period of time. That creates sort of strategy where you get a, too, a bit too relaxed and a bit too uh, set in your ways and conservative, and you have this expectation that you'll just maintain your position. You still have to fight for it if you're a cash cow, of course. Um, limitation five, if you classify it as a dog down in the bottom quadrant, um, I'm using my model before, and we've got all these businesses that are dogs, the matrix says dogs are poor opportunities we either just let them sit there and we don't worry about them, we don't invest in them, or we divest them. And as I, as I showed you before, we've got Apple sitting over here making a pile of money and a lot of dogs are profitable. Yes, they're not as profitable as some cash cows, but they still make good money. So the BCG matrix using the term dog means that, gee, we should get rid of it. And in terms of strategy, that's often not a, not a good choice. Um, number six, as I, I gave you the history, it was designed for an investment tool. Okay, so for large companies, these businesses were owned by the same company. They're not, they weren't looking at competition. It wasn't a competitive tool initially. And they were going to go, okay, where do we put our money? Where do we invest? Okay, so for example, cash cows make a lot of money and we keep some of that money re reinvested. But most of the money should be reinvested in, in our stars if we have some. So that means we, one dollar sign means we get some of the money from the profit, which is being made by the cash cow. And three dollar signs means a lot of money is then reinvested into the stars. We do that because stars are designed to be long term, uh, cash cows. And over here, I've got a separate video on question marks, but Often they were considered to be too expensive to maintain because we've got to move them from here to here. So they've got to catch up in terms of market share and then they've got to hold their position. Okay, the next limitation is an underlying assumption of the BCG matrix. It was built around manufacturing firms and if you perhaps come across Porter's generic strategies, 
he talks about cost leadership or, or, or cost advantage. And you only ever had one star or question mark because the company here on this side had the biggest market share. They had a dominant position. And through that, they could gain through what's called economies of scale, which is spreading their production across uh, a lot of production across their fixed costs or experience curve benefits. And that basically, as you, you get more experience in production and logistics, etc., you become more efficient at it. So you develop this massive cost advantage. Uh, so this model argues on this side of the business, on this side of the marketplace, you have that cost advantage. And these companies over here cannot compete on price or you just su uh, surpass them with superior financial performance. Okay, so again, um, that's not as relevant today. We're not that focused on, on cost advantage. Yes, some, some companies would do that, say, like a Walmart business or something like that. But most companies compete on differentiation and try not to get too caught up in price. So the, the fundamental argument about price-based competition is, is possibly not valid for a lot of uh, businesses today. Okay, the next limitation is the use of the terms themselves. Uh, they can be confusing or misleading. If we were just to ask people who did not know this model to put these terms in order, they would probably come up with that list. Stars at the top, they all they sound the best, they're stars. Stars are good, and stars will hopefully one day turn into our cash flows and be the future of our business. Currently, stars are most likely to cost the business money. Why is that? They're the market leader, typically in a, in a fast growing market. So they're expanding quickly in terms of uh, geographic market, in terms of the products that need to have. They're building awareness. They're building their brand. They're defending against competition. They're recruiting lots of people. They're in a mad growth uh, battle for, for market share. And that means they're very expensive to maintain. And that's why the money that cash cows make go into starts. So, to think, oh, gee, that business is a star, it'll just happen. No, a star means that we have to think about the future of that one. As I mentioned before, we've got dogs. That sounds really bad. But a lot of dogs make money, including um, uh, potentially Apple, uh, as I, I showed you before. Cash cows are good. That's a good thing. And question mark, um, the question is, do we keep this business? Is it worthwhile investing, bringing it over here, or taking it over there? So it's really what is the question um, makes a bit more sense rather than what, what a question mark is. Limitation nine, when we plot the portfolios, they need to fit clearly into a quadrant. And I've got this called the, the black hole. If we had something that sits right in the middle, it's a little piece of each of the four um, directions, it gives us no guidance. Likewise, if we've got something that's half a cash cow, half a star, half a question mark, half a dog, anywhere here, what, what do we do with it? Yeah, if you're sure of sitting right up there, that's clear. But if it's sitting down here, really this model doesn't help us. We need clear, distinct solutions when we, when you use the B, BCG. And then finally, the biggest limitation, it's just, it's just, it's just a conceptual model. Okay, there are helpful principles that, that I, I, when I teach, I use to uh, illustrate some points of strategy. You know, growth markets are opportunities. Stars, we need to support them rather than they, they just don't happen. We need still need to defend our cash cow. And the biggest learning thing, I think, is that, that it connects, helps connect in the minds of students the, the uh, competitive strengths, which is our relative market share, to opportunities which is a key part of strategy development. Um, other than that, it's a fairly a basic model with a whole bunch of limitations. And here's the summary of limitations that I've, I've listed for you. So you've got a, um, a summary if you want to take a screenshot. And that's it. There's lots of other videos on the BCG matrix, so please check them out and please subscribe to my channel.